Outreach Ministry. Located right here. Where? In the beautiful city of Ridgeland, South Carolina. Under the leadership of none other than Pastor Josie M. Bostick. We thank each and every one of you that are tuning in. And we would like to say once again, take time, sit down, and be a blessing to whosoever will outreach. Be a blessing also to living strong and let God move in your life. And therefore, we are able to continue to move and to do what God is doing in your life and to bring forth, rather, what God is doing in your life. Now, let me say to each and every one of you that are watching that, once again, we would like to thank you for your support. We would like to thank you for each and every time that we hear from you. And I would like to say, if that you would want us to come into your area, make sure, if you would like for us to come into your area, make sure that you log on to Living Strong TV Network and let us know. And we will be glad to come in and to be a blessing unto each and every one of you that are watching into the leadership in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, also, we would like to once again give a shout out. Guess where it's coming to? Hey, Over City Music, bringing forth that theme song, putting up the good work. We are praying for you that God will continue to expand you and to bless you, even as he expands you and to bless you and to bring forth what he have called in your life. Now, for the ones that have been watching lately, you know that fastest 30 minutes is coming right now. Take time, call, us, call a friend, call a neighbor, and let them know that it is on. So, we are coming out of the book of Genesis again on tonight. And you've got to remember, we are talking about the greater of God. I am so excited about the greater of God until I could not wait to get back and talk to you tonight about what God is doing. I just heard the Lord say, shout out to Ohio. Ohio, oh, you are watching tonight all the way up in Ohio, Hamilton, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. You are watching tonight. Shout out to Mississippi. You are watching tonight. And God is blending in and he is breaking forth in your life like never before in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, remember, we have come all the way from the power of a changed mind, all the way up to dealing with your it, also the answer to your it. And now we are looking at the greater of God. This is going to be exciting coming forth right now in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I thank you. So make sure that you hunkle down. If you got your chips and your dips, however which way you're going to wine and dine, it's all fine. But don't you move because it is coming your way right now. And we are going into the book of Genesis. Remember on last night, we talked about that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And the Lord began to say everything that he said. And so therefore, what he said in the, in the beginning, in the end, he saw. So in six days, God created the heavens and the earth. And he also rested the seventh day. And we understand that when he created the heavens and the earth, he saved the best for last. And we saw that in Genesis chapter number 20, uh, uh, chapter number one, verse number 26. Watch this. We see that the Bible declares, and God made the beast of the earth. Watch this. Earth erects. All right? I want you to remember that one word, erects. Earth all right, ruddy, red, substance, planet, because that's going to connect with Adam. That's going to connect with Ad, Am, all right? And so remember, we talked about Ad to who I am. So now, and God said, I am that I am. And when Moses said to him, 
who do I say sent me? He said, tell them that I am. You know, which means that anything that I want to be in your life, I will be in your life. So therefore, God made the beast of the, the earth and after his kind, the cattle and every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. And he said, it's good. And then God said, watch this, verse number 26. He said, and let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, remember them, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every creepy thing. And so therefore we go a little bit further. Watch what we pick up tonight. Listen to what is so excited and so exciting about the great of God. Remember that Jesus said to you and I, in so many words in the book of 1 John, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Also the Bible declared that Jesus said, is it not written in the scriptures that you are God's small g? And also the Psalms declares, God standeth in the congregation and he judged among the gods, small g. So if he's in the congregation, he's judging among the gods, that lets us know that something significant is happening in your life and my life. Remember, we talked about the fact that God looked and after he created everything, he could find nothing else that was greater in his creation. So all of a sudden, he stumbled upon himself, looked in the mirror, and realized that I have found something that's going to resonate like never before. Then he said, let us make man in our image. He looked to the right, and he spoke to Jesus. He looked to the left, and he spoke to the Holy Ghost. And when he spoke, he being El Elohim, which means plural as one, we three are one Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Triune Godhead, Trinity, Triangle Effect, based upon what God is doing. And then he said, we are going to make man in our image. And then after that, we're going to give them dominion. And then he began to call something to happen in the earth. Look at verse number 27. Watch this. The Bible declares, so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he, him. Stop. Number one, he created man in his own image. And then in the image of God created he, him. Which means that he put the man inside of the mold and took man from the earth and then formed man to look like him and not only that created he him which meant God put himself inside of man. How is it the Bible declares that the heavens of heavens cannot contain God? And God created the heavens and the earth, and the heavens weren't big enough to hold God. How is it that a God that is so big that cannot fit inside of the heavens can fit inside of man? So he created he him. And then it declares, and I like this, male and female created he, them. So he created male and female right on the inside of Adam. Put something there and then the Bible declares in verse number 28, and God blessed them. So when God blessed them, he also blessed himself. So the greater of God was based upon the fact that he had to come up with something that was bigger than himself. 
And you say, Prophet Johnson, ain't nothing bigger than God. You got that right. For the servant will never be greater than the master, will never be greater than the Lord. The only thing that God could do to match himself was to make you and I in his image. And then after that, he began to do something very, very powerful. He gave them something called dominion. And he said unto them, multiply and replenish. The earth should do it and have dominions over everything. And then he saw that everything that he had made was good. And when God saw that it was good, something happened all of a sudden. He calls something significant to take place in chapter number two, verse number seven. Listen to this. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and, watch this, <clears throat> man became a living soul. And then the Lord planted him in the garden eastward. And there he put the man whom he had formed in that garden. And the Lord saw everything that he had made was good. But now I want you to hear this. Because all of a sudden, God saw the fact that man was alone. And he caused him to have something to take place in verse number 19. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast. And then he brought them to Adam. And Adam called every living creature by name. Remember this one. Remember this. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. But, conjunction, <clears throat> there was not found and helped me to meet Adam. And so therefore, since there wasn't a found a help meet for him, the Bible declares in verse number 21, Genesis chapter number two. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead. And when God took the rib of Adam, which the Lord God had taken from man, the Bible declares that he formed a woman and he brought her to the man. If God don't bring the woman to you, she's not right for you. When God brought the, I know you're saying, Prophet Johnson, he who finds a wife. <laughs> it's because God gonna bring him to her or to him. Thank you. Bring her to him. So let's not talk about that. So therefore, when he formed the rib and he took out of Adam the rib, he began to make the womb man or the woman and he formed her. And Adam said in verse number 23, I like this. This is very important. In verse number 23, and Adam said, this is now bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she is taken out of man. When he said bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, he realized that God had done something in which heaven and earth could not ever phantom. 
even the angels that stood around began to look at Adam and look at him and begin to wonder who is this that is made in the image of God who is this that is made a little bit lower than the angels and even as they begin to examine him and they begin to critique him the golden angel of beauty with his wings that spread all the way back set forth and look at his golden hair and look at the flash of his beauty but realize that even with that he did not match the man that God had made and even the angel that came down from various nations of many colors because we understand that he was filled with the rainbow himself but he could not match the man of Adam even the angel that came with had eyes that were all seeing eyes under his foot and eyes in his hand and eyes in the back of his head and eyes all around could not match that what was made in the image of Adam and the reason why was because Adam was made in covenant. Even though the angel, the angel had eyes everywhere, Adam two eyes represent covenant. His nostrils represent covenant. His ears represented covenant. His hands represented covenant. His feet represented covenant. And everything that they looked at could not match what God had brought forth out of Adam because he had brought forth the greater of himself. But the angel said who are men that they are mindful or that you are mindful of him and then one stepped forth his face was white like ice and he walked and he glowed like the wind itself with locks in his hair made like snow he looked at Adam and he glowed with the glory of earth itself but when he noticed that this man stood in the image of God he noticed that everything about God looked at better than every angel in every creation that have ever been formed and so God took from him bone And when he took it, he took it from the curve. And now he said, I'm going to make something better than Adam. I'm going to make something that is the womb of Adam, which is the man on the end, but the woman from the womb. So he took the bone from the bone. And when he took the bone from the bone, he formed this beautiful, magnificent, glorious woman that was called Eve. She was so beautiful even to the point until there was no other glory that could stand in her presence because she came from the inside of the clay that God had made from the beginning. And the earth itself, being erex, which meant Adam, being red or ruddy or from the earth, because if you look at the earth, you got to go through the topsoil, you got to go through the sand, and you got to go through the clay, and you get through that red dirt, and once you get to that, you see where Adam came forth. That's why every color on the face of this earth is able to come out of that color red, because now we see that white came from the sand, black came from the top soil, and it goes down off in there and shout out and let us know that some people get it right. It don't matter if you're black or white because he had to go through all of that to get to the red because everything came from the red because the red represents the blood of Jesus which he died and sacrificed himself from the foundation of the world so that lamb that was slain came out of erect which is of the earth and Adam came out of erect which is of the earth so he went down past black he went down past white he went down past yellow and green and all the others and he got to the blood which was the red and once he got that up he said every marble every color can come out of this that's why you got a black man a white man a green man a yellow man a brown man can I go any further why are you so excited, Prophet Johnson? The reason why 
It's because he's creating the greater of you and the greater of you is coming forth. And so from the bone of Adam, he took Eve, this woman, and brought her to Adam. And Adam took her. So when God brings a woman to you, men, it's your choice whether or not you're going to receive her. And the Lord is going to judge you whether or not you're going to receive her because you got a covenant by law. And when he took her, he brought her out of the curve of this man and she was so bad to the bone until it then make no difference she was set up and hooked up so good until everything in, 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 in creation stopped and marveled at their beauty because this was the greater of God Eve was set to the point and you've got to know that she was the first lady of the earth so Cleopatra didn't have nothing on Eve the queen of Sheba didn't have nothing on Eve excuse me Mary the mother of Jesus Ooh, she didn't have nothing on Jesus even though I love Mary so therefore in the midst of that when you look at that you've got to understand that Eve looked at so much in the image of God until she would have made fashion fair look like fanfare and she would have made all of Olay go apply at Frito Lay, uh, at Frito Lay. and so she would have hooked all that up and, and said to fashion fair you can you need to go to fanfare and all of Olay you need to go and fill out an application at Frito Lay. and I heard about some of the other things that taken place in uh, America and all over the world based upon beauty contests and everything else let me tell you something Eve looked at so good until there is no woman in America no woman on earth that can ever compare to the greater of God that was in Adam and that was in Eve and that's in your life and in my life and I don't care who they put on Time Magazine whether it's Beyonce or whatever the case may be Eve would have made Beyonce look like honey boo boo and so it doesn't matter which way you dress yourself up God is trying to tell you that the greater of God that is coming out in you is letting you know that you was created from the dust of the earth and you was brought forth in his image and so this year you will not sit back and wonder if it will ever happen in your life you're going to rise up and do what God have called you to do why because even the man in the moon and the woman know better than that oh I'm not going to stop fast at 30 minutes is coming at you period is he serious? Yes. Because you are the greater of God. And until you realize that, you are not going to accomplish your goals. It's no laughing matter no more. Well, now, Prophet Johnson, well, I don't know about no man in the moon, and I don't know about no woman in the moon. If you really look at the man in the moon and the woman in the moon, you really see Adam and Eve. He stuck their pictures right there in the moon, right over the earth so you can see them. And I look at them all the time. When the man's face is up, the woman's face is down. When the woman's face is up, the man's face is turned to the side. Well, I ain't never seen no man and no woman in the moon. And I ain't never heard such a much thing like that all the days of my life. Well, the reason why is probably because you're drinking too much moonshine. If you start drinking so much moonshine, you can see what God is trying to say. And you know people are going to go around and judge you and they're going to talk about everything but it's right there in the Bible. Male and female created he him. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He created he him himself in the midst of Adam and Eve and so therefore the greater of who you are is coming forth for the Bible declares that God have this treasure in an earthen vessel and if you call upon the name of the Lord he shall deliver you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of for the Lord said I will bless your going out and I will bless your coming in and the Lord said I shall make you the head and not the tail above and not beneath blessed and not cursed so therefore you don't need to get caught up in some strategy when he says to study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so there is no better thing that looks better than you except God himself because you look like God. 
And when you look like God, that's all there is to it. So the greater of you is coming out. He's unfolding in you time and chance like you've never seen before. And he's magnifying it. Fastest 30 minutes coming your way right now. Talking about the greater of God. So don't sit up and tell me about everybody else that looks like whatever they look like and you can go look in the mirror and see what God looked like. You want to know how God looked? Go look in the mirror. What well, God looks like this? Oh, yes, he do. But I don't think that I look too good. I'm ugly. Did God ugly? <laughs> okay. Well, I think I'm a glamour. Oh, my God, I should take a picture. Then God is a glamour. He should take a picture with you. It's amazing. I ain't never seen nothing like it. People sit up and, and, and just because somebody's on a magazine or in a photograph doesn't mean that they got it all going on. You got folks right now that's on national television that's going through more hell than some of y'all ever going to ever see. You got people thinking about committing suicide. And God is trying to bring us to a point to where you snap back and you realize that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How many times I got to say it that the Lord declares in his word, I have this treasure in an earthen vessel. He put a treasure on the inside of you and me. And I hear the Lord saying to someone tonight, you are not going to continue to be plain, but you're breaking beyond the brink. And you're coming into a place of new self-discovery. And the Lord is saying that the adventure that is upon your life is about to take place. There's a pastor that's been watching for a while. You should have done and responded already. What are you waiting for? The Lord is saying it is time for you to occupy the land. It is time for you to occupy the territory. And the Lord is saying to tell you that it is, yes, your time to purchase even in the midst of a down or a bad economy because of what he is doing in your life. Someone watching, you're going to get pregnant with twins. And I hear the Lord saying one in each ovary. Also, there's a person that is concerned about a lost pet. It is going to come home. Listen to me. Whenever the Lord speaks, he speaks in reverence to your life. Somebody done put things on the back burner. And Lord, and this don't make no sense. I ain't never heard this before. The father said there's a person watching. You done set some things on the back burner. The Lord said, while things are on the back burner, he put them there for you. And the reason why is because it's time for you to start watching the checks come in. <laughs> Money's coming your way, cash coming your way. Don't worry about what's on the back burner. You just thank God for what you got coming in, okay? Hey, you got to remember, the greater of God is what we're talking about tonight. And we're moving forward. I've told you already, it doesn't matter based upon what they say you look like or where you come from. Because when God is through, it's a done deal. They talked about Cal gone, take me away. Oh, Adam and Eve looked at so good until they would have made Cal gone look like the Mississippi River. <laughs> That's just how God does it. And you talking about putting somebody on a magazine? Oh, no offense. But you don't even come close. Excuse me. You can't really even touch Mary. And she was the mother of Jesus. <laughs> so you got to understand. You got to understand. That he created he, him, and them. So the greater of God in you is saying, this is your time to multiply. Some of you have subtracted so long until the, when you go up to add, you put a minus by it. And God is saying, no more. No more subtraction in your life. Because once the greater of God is discovered in you, once that greatness is discovered in you, then he turns the events like never before. And the father is saying to tell you, 
Get ready. Because you have not seen any challenges like you're going to see that's coming up. And the reason why is because I want to show you this. Fast is 30 minutes coming your way. And you've got to remember that no matter what it looks like, when he took from man the rib and he formed the woman, he took the most valuable curve of man. This is why when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. And he said, this is bone of my bone, which means we are joined. And since we are joined, we are in covenant with God. And now watch this. Because as I come to a close, the Bible declares something very powerful. And I want you to hear this. It said in verse number 7 in chapter number 2, the Bible declares, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and God planted man in the garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and then God saw this and when God saw this he put him by the rivers in verse number 10 and the rivers went out of Eden to the water of the garden and and from thence it was parted and became into four heads, four heads. That means restore all oh, the fastest 30 minutes is coming and flying by you right now. I wish I had more time because what God is trying to tell you is that he put you in a place to where you was covered on the north, the south, the east, and the west. And based upon that, he set you in a place to where you were surrounded by his glory. In verse number 12, and the gold of that land is good. In verse number 12, there is Bedlam and Arnox. In verse number 13, in the name of the second river, the Gishon. And it goes on to talk about what it has. And it talks about the Hishon and the Euphrates and the other rivers that God is talking about, the Heidi Kale, and what he's saying to you is that once I plant you in your garden this year, I'm not going to allow the whisperer, the knockoffs, Satan, to come in, Lucifer, Slewfoot, to take away from you the glory that I have set upon your life and what he's doing, he's turning the events like never before and I'll say it again and I'll shout it out and I'll preach it all over the land and I want them to know he'll make you look so good because you are made in his image you are made in his glory you are due for honor and as I said before he'll make fashion fair look like a fanfare he'll make all of Olay apply to Frito Olay and he'll make Beyonce look like honey boo boo all because of the fact that you are made in the glory of God and there is no greater love except one lay down his life for a friend don't you ever let nobody on the magazine don't you ever let nobody in society put you down based upon who you are, where you come from because you may have come from the project but you're going to the palace and God is saying your pitfalls are over, your downfalls are over, your setbacks are over and I want you to know that my time is almost over. Fast as 30 minutes in broadcast. Coming your way. Prophet Johnson, are you excited? I'm so excited about the greater of God. Until this year, you're going to get your balance back. And Father, I pray for all those that are watching. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you have preeminence over their life. I bind every devil and every demon. I'm more serious now tonight than ever before. Because something is knocking at your door and it's called love. Log in, send a donation. Don't just watch, so give. Sow a seed into living strong. And 
watch God bless you. I like to tell you that, hey, that's my time. Thank you for yours. Y'all have a good night. Right, push one. Walk me 